that you have faced that Mocha and Co has faced um, for the past six months for you to get to where you are today? There's a lot of challenges. No, no joke. I mean, uh, actually, we not. I mean, we start operating six months, seven months back. But we we start do R and D, uh, market research, uh, one year back. It took us about one year plus to do all the market research. I mean, the R and D and whatnot. So it's a bit challenge for us because you know skincare is a bit. I mean, makeup and skincare education is a bit skeptical. People always skeptical with local product. They would thought that oh, local product will not as good as international brand so it's i found it it's so um, challenging in a way for me to find a good factory or a good chemist to do my product so it took me some time to develop the product mm. which is uh i mean kalau you tak sabar you were definitely like okay give up i almost give up i mean in a way for me to build up the brand because for me all you want to do is to be break down the stigma and skeptical all these skeptical saying that Malaysian product is not good. So I want to give the best. So that's how, that's why we come up with the USP of mineral based, <coughs> chemical free and whatnot because we want to have a good product and a natural product instead of some things that are very high chemicals and whatnot. So in a way for me to find that kind of product is a bit hassle. Mm -hmm. It's way way hassle. So it took me some time and, and then when you find a good uh, supplier and good chemist it will cost you a lot of money. So I mean, I mean, I'm uh, resources. Uh, I mean, funding and financial is a big thing in business and building up the business. So at first, I mean, uh, the first round of investment. I mean, that we do a seeding investment from personal. I mean, we do our own. Then suddenly, throughout the three months, we stop. I mean, we totally stop because you've been spending a lot on the branding. Uh, resources and why not and I say like although you were sold out in a in a month uh, in, in a, a week but still you couldn't find the money yet because all has been invested in all this this kind of small small little thing and I was like oh that I think my husband we are stuck we are totally stuck because we need to get uh, the products and we are like <laughs> the funds totally drain out mm -hmm. and suddenly Luckily, uh, I was lucky uh, whereby uh, people come across. I mean, that's a that's one of our friend of mine, a friend of my husband came and said, "Like, put this way, I like your business. I know this can go far. Let me be the investor." Mm. So then I was like, "Okay, what are you say We start all over again." Uh, that was a big challenge. I mean, resources, funding is very important. I almost give up, say like, oh, say, if I don't have this much money, how am I supposed to continue? I mean, people be waiting for my products and out of stock, and it's all right, and you are just stuck, and you are stuck just because of the lack of resources. All right. Well, financial is actually very important. Now, speaking about financial, um, Azrini here was sharing on how Three Little Ahmad's grew very fast within, uh, within a year. Um, recently, I read an article on sometimes, just sometimes scaling too fast or growing too fast is not always a good idea. So um, Soraya here, um, um, around the time that I know Soraya, I knew her when she was when she was the founder of so uh, Sakura Malaysia. In fact, I actually own a few of Sakura Malaysia bags. I want you to share with us today why, it, whether or not you think scaling too fast is a good idea. And if not, then why? Okay. Um, okay. Um, this is very personal, yeah, guys? <laughs> okay, so you remember when I said just now I was the owner of Sakura Malaysia and I said I'll tell you later? Well, I no longer own Sakura Malaysia. About, um, I started Sakura Malaysia about six years ago. And then um, we, I, I mean, I, I didn't come from a, a, a family who had 